the numerator, first couple fractions that we're going to add. Of course, this is pretty much like three problems in one. Are you guys seeing that, that we really have three problems in one? We've got addition, we've got subtraction, then we have division. So it's incorporated all of our fraction ideas right now. That's true, because division implies multiplication as well. So literally everything you learn about fractions, you're using right here. OK, so our, our numerator. We've got to find an LCD. Of course, the LCD is pretty much given to you. The LCD is right here. It's the 8. Now, we're not going to multiply this fraction because it's already got the 8. However, we will multiply this fraction by 4 over 4. And what this is going to lead to is 4 eighths plus 3 eighths. Did you get 4 eighths plus 3 eighths? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. On the denominator, we have just a little bit more work to do. 24. Which one are we going to use? 12, 24? 24. Probably 12. I like 12 because it's smaller. That's the LCD. Would 24 work? Sure. Sure it will. But you're going to have a lot of simplification to do later on. So we're going to pick the smaller one. We're going to pick the smallest one that we can. 6 doesn't work. The next multiple is 12. That clearly works. This will multiply 2 over 2. This will multiply 3 over 3. And we're going to get 9 twelfths minus 2 twelfths. How many people made it that far? Good. That's fantastic. After that, we're going to combine some fractions. Combine some fractions. Our 4 plus 3 over 8, we're going to get 7 eighths. Our 9 minus 2 over 8, we're going to get 7 twelfths. Oh, I think I missed my intermediate step. If you're not. If you're not sure on how to do that, that's what we're doing here. 4 plus 3 over 8, uh, all over 9 minus 2 over 12. That's this step. Now I'll make sure I show that work. We got 7 eighths divided by 7 twelfths. That's exactly what we're going to write out. It's 7 eighths divided by 7 twelfths. Now, of course, division means multiplication by reciprocal. So we're going to leave our first fraction alone. We'll still have 7 eighths. We'll multiply it by not 7 twelfths, but 12 over 7. Of course, we must extend this fraction bar so that we know we're multiplying, and that allows us to simplify. We cannot multiply unless you have one fraction with multiplication, not addition, not subtraction, none of that stuff, just multiplication. What does simplify here? Seven. When I cross out the 7s. One. Is that zero? No. Good, because we're actually dividing. Yeah, you're right. And the 8 and the 12, what goes into both those? Four. 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 Two times, three, three, three times. Three, three. three over halves, so let me see your hands if you got that. Three halves. All right, good, do good job. Bless you. We're going to try one more together. I'll give you one more to do on your own. We'll talk about some more operations, and that'll end our day today. So, like plan? Yeah. All right. Well, let's look at what we got here. Now, we clearly have some complex fractions. Clearly have some complex fractions. But I want you to look up at the board with me. Let's focus in up here, folks. Guys in the back. We, we clearly have complex fractions because we have one fraction, another fraction. They're in a fraction themselves. But whereas in the previous examples, we had a couple fractions on the top and a couple on the bottom, we had some weird things going on. First off, we have one fraction on the top. Now, that's actually a good thing, right? That's right. what we want. We want one fraction on the top. Leave it alone. How, yeah, we're going to leave that completely alone. You're right. On the denominator, though, we've got one fraction and we've got a whole number. Can you change a whole number into a fraction? Yes. So really, when we have a whole number, we don't really have just the one. I'm going to change that to 1 over 1. We're going to take that whole number, put it over 1. That makes it so that we have two fractions on the denominator. So we're going to leave the numerator alone. That's great. We want just one fraction. Denominator, though, we need to combine those before we do anything else. We can't do a division problem right now until we get one fraction one fraction. Let's work on it. What do we need to do first for this bottom? Common denominator. OK, someone else give me what is my common denominator? Five. 
So same process, we got LCD of 5. We don't need to multiply this by anything, it's already got the 5. Over here though, we'll do 5 over 5, because we know that in order to get 5 on the denominator, we need to multiply by that number. So 3 fourths is good to go. On the denominator, we have x over 5 minus 5 over 5. Okay, I need to make sure you're with me so far. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, good. good. I have a common denominator, right? Yeah. Right. Can I combine those fractions? No. no. Why not? There's no like terms on the top. Okay, but can I make that as one fraction? Yes. Okay, let's do that. So we're clear that we have 3 fourths. I want you to watch what happens when you combine the fractions on the bottom. When you combine the fractions on the bottom, you, you've actually done problems like this before. I just graded your homework. Some people made a little math error here. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. You do have a common, ignore this top part for a second, right? Ignore that. You do have a common denominator. So what is your denominator going to be here? Five. Five. The thing I need to be very careful of is what goes up here. What does go up here? X goes up there. What else? Minus five. Okay, the minus sign goes up there. And what else? Five. I have two questions. The first question is, can I combine those? No. I had a lot of people do that. A lot of people had like 18B minus five and gave me something like 13B. You can't do that. Okay, unless you have like, like terms, you cannot combine those. One's got an X, one doesn't. That's, that's not like terms. One's a variable, one's a number. You can't take x minus 5 and get anything besides x minus 5. You just can't do it. Are you with me on that? Yes. It's like having x bananas and you take away $5. What do you have? Uh, I don't know. x bananas minus $5. They're not the same units. They're the same thing. You can't do that. Also, one last question. This is an important one for you. Can you simplify the fives in this case? No. Can you just cross them out? Can I do that? No. Is it the same as doing something like this? No. no. I didn't even look the same. One has multiplication, one has subtraction. Can I cross out across subtraction? No. no. This is considered a term. When you have things that are added or subtracted, they're terms. You can't ever cross out or cancel out terms. You can factors, things that are multiplied together. So this is one situation where we can. This is one situation where we, we cannot. Hey, by the way, do we have one fraction over one fraction now? Yeah, I see one. I see yeah. one fraction. This is one fraction now, right? Yeah. So we, have it. we can do the same exact process. Just watch carefully how this works. I'm gonna move over here. You guys, follow me if I move over here. Yeah. yeah. So we have got one fraction on the, the main numerator. And we have one fraction on the main denominator. If we write this out, I want you to think of what it means. This is 3 fourths divided by x minus 5 over 5. This is 3 fourths divided by x minus 5 over 5. Hey, does this say the same thing to you that this does? Yes. yes. Good, it should. It's the same thing. Can I still go through the process? Yes. Which fraction do I reciprocate, the first, the second, or both? So I know 3 fourths I'll leave alone. I'll multiply by, what's this fraction become? We're going to treat it the same way as any other fractions. We can still flip that over, still reciprocate it. Raise your hand if you're okay with it so far. Good. The next step, this is the step you got to be kind of careful of. Okay, watch, watch up here for a second. Now, when you extend the line, which I've let you do, You're clearly multiplying, right? Yes. Please watch up at the board here real quick. You, you're definitely multiplying the 3 times 5. You're definitely multiplying the 4 times something. But are you supposed to multiply the 4 just time the, times the x or the 4 times the entire x minus 5? Times x. So am I going to leave it 4x minus 5? No. What should I have there? 4x minus Okay, what else could I show that as instead of doing that in my head? What do I do? If I want to show that I'm not just multiplying 4 times x. Good. Say that again. You put parentheses. So I want to show that I'm actually, I'm going to show you the extra step in this case because I want you to see what happens. I have 3 fourths times 5 over x minus 5. When I write this as one fraction, sure, I have the 3 times 5. 
But it's not just four times x. It's four times this entire thing. How I show times that entire thing, I've got to have some parentheses. I've got to have that. That says four times that entire expression, x minus 5. So whereas before you get 4x minus 5, you're not going to get that. You're going to get 4x minus 20, actually, if you were to distribute that. Now, I don't care whether you distribute that or not. You can, or you can leave it just like this. One last question. Can you simplify the 15 with the 5? No. What do you yes. think? No. Is it being subtracted? Then you cannot. You're done. Wait, so we, we don't distribute? You can if you like. You, don't, you absolutely don't have to. There, there's no reason that you, you have to distribute that unless it asks you to do that. You can, you can leave it. That's called factored form. You can leave it as being factored, all right? It's your choice. It's your choice. Do you guys have any questions on this? Because I'm about to erase it. All right. I want you to do one on your own. Then we'll move on to order of operations. There you go. Go for it. Remember, we're supposed to get one fraction on the numerator denominator, then write a division problem, simplify. Mm-hmm. 